Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Al's Vintage Toy Trains, and today, at the request of a subscriber, uh, he wanted me to show how I displayed my trains on the shelves, and so I figured I'd do a quick little tour of my basement, and to start off with, I use these anodized aluminum shelves, and they are made by Glenn Snyder's Display Systems. I've got a catalog here, so I guess I can promote it in that uh, I've got about 18 of these shelves and uh, really like how they work. And they come in three different uh, various sizes. So you've got uh, HO and S on the left. You've got O gauge on the upper right, which is what I use. And you have a combo of O standard and LGB or G gauge. So. This is an older catalog. They were $18 for this first set that I bought. I think they're now listed at $20. Uh, you'll see them advertised in Classic Toy Trains. And fairly simple to install. Uh, essentially just uh, making your level mark where you want the shelves. You mark where the studs are in the wall. And then there's these little lines in the back. And if you use the line on the back, if you uh, transfer your mark to the back, uh, it'll guide you in making the hole in the right spot and uh, really nice so here's what we got on this particular set of shelves so I've got my 2345 Western Pacifics up on the top just below that is a 40 47 8 or 9 GG1 it's the 2332 single motored all right, next we've got the 746. This is the short stripe version. This was made between 1957 and 1960. Got a set of 2333s, or the early F3s, that Lionel made in Santa Fe colors. Uh, let's see, what else? We've got the Bell Ringer 622 NW switcher. We've got the Union Pacific 23 or make that 2023's 1950 only anniversary set uh, I've got a uh, ball bash here number 2337 and one of my sets that I like a lot is this 2140 WS set it's a 671 turbine and uh, it's got the uh, the green passenger cars the first series of the 2400 cars so well, these are 1948 or 1949. I know that the engine's a 1949, so this should be a 1949 set. Pick that up from an original owner. Uh, we've got the Milwaukee Road 2338. And on the lower shelves, I've got my Berkshires. So I've got a 726 here. This is a, it's got the little simulated coupler, coupler on the front. So that would make it a 48 or 49. I really love the tender that comes with that. We also have 726RR made in 1952 only. Also have a 736 and a 6457 caboose. So let's see if I can get a side profile of the shelves. And again, they're anodized aluminum, so they won't chip or, or rust. And uh, I kind of like them a lot. All right, I'll show you the semi-messy room. So I've got a mixed bag of stuff on my shelves. Pre-war, post-war records. Uh, but I got a lot of little boxed items that I store here. And more boxed items. And go ahead and uh, where I work on my trains, table, workspace, more boxed items, projects. It's always projects. All right. Got a little display of motorized units. Got a 
good collection of the motorized units. I don't have every one of them, but uh, we're working on it. Transformers. And we'll go into train room number one. So this is where I do most of my videos right here on this layout. It is roughly 18 feet long by just about 11 feet. I think it's like 10 foot uh, 8 or something like that wide. And I have to crawl underneath the table in order to, uh, to get to the controls. But uh, I kind of like that so that when I'm making videos, I didn't think about that in 1999 when I set up the layout. But uh, it's pretty convenient for making videos and watching the trains go around the layout. So this is more for the purposes of displaying the trains and post-war items that you see. So this is more or less my post-war layout. Not everything's post-war, but uh, uh, by the most part, it, it is mostly post-war. All right, so that's... Uh, the main layout, I also have another room, and the layout I'm currently working on is uh, mostly pre-war. Got some more boxed items here, and this is in progress. There'll be some sidings, operating accessories, and I got a mix of standard gauge and O gauge. Don't have a lot of standard gauge, but uh, this is about what I have space for anyway. And we'll go back to uh, the shelves. So I've got more shelves here and uh, a mixed bag of things, mostly post war on this side. Got the aluminum 2500 series cars. Got uh, Lionel's 2353 Santa Fe's 44 ton switcher. I've got uh, a set with the 671 RR turbine. I've got the 463W set here from 1945. I've got uh, more 2400 series passenger cars. I've got the 2175W Santa Fe set uh, from 1952. And we'll move over to the next set. These are probably most of my prized pieces in the collection. And at the top, I've got the 226 with the Manhattan cars that you see up top. Those are the pre-wars in 1940, 41. Got the 1950 Hudson set. And this one has the uh, silhouetted windows. And then probably my most favorite set here is 763 Hudson with the blue Comet cars. And I do have the individual boxes for these. And uh, just an amazing condition for 1938. And got a 227 switcher set here. So this one's a complete set. I believe it's 239B. I've got more. More sets. This is a 1946 set here with the 1665 switcher. And it's got the hard to find grain car with the green boom. A 1656 switcher followed by another uh, switcher set. Post war. And then one of the sets that got me into collecting is this 260E. Uh, it was made in 1930. Got uh, the boxes for the uh, the engine and tender. It's the first year with the uh, entire thing is black with the cream stripe down the side. Same thing with the tender. 
And then it's got the 710 and 712 passenger cars. Um, just above that, I've got a 1941 pre-war set here. It's an inexpensive set, but it was clean when I found this one. So I've got the set box for that and individual boxes. And then another prize set is the 2360. This is the congressional set from 1956. And it's got the uh, the 2500 series aluminum cars, Pennsylvania cars to, to go with it. And that one's also another great set. All right, so I guess you had a chance to see what I had on the shelves. My second layout that I'm working on. And uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. This is Al, and thank you for watching.